everyone. Welcome back to Eternal Midnight. It's the month of November. And for this month, Eternal Midnight is going animated. We're doing all the Hayao Miyazaki Studio Ghibli films. I'm here with Chad. What's going on, man? What's going on? N- nothing much. So, let's start from the very beginning. You know, let's start from the very, very beginning. When I told you uh, you want that uh, I, we were, I wanted to do Studio Ghibli for November, what, were you, what was your initial thoughts? I hope there's somewhere I can watch them all without torrenting them. <laughs> and did you find one? You know what? I'll 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 do this without sounding like a total sellout. They're all on HBO Max, so if you don't have it, get it because there's a shit ton of stuff on there. <laughs> but yeah, no, they're for real. Um, no, I looked right after you told me about it. Yeah, all of them are on uh, America's HBO Max. Oh, and as for me, they're all on Philippines Netflix. That's so that's good. You actually have the choice between different uh, audio HBO Max. You get whatever they want you to have. <laughs> Yeah, I had the option between either Japanese and um, um, English dub. So, so for these, I'll ask you, what are you going with for most of these? Are you doing Japanese with subtitles? I'm doing all Japanese. Okay. Like, like a man of culture. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hey, it's not my fault when they don't give me the option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. All right. So, and how did you watch? So for these two, we're um, doing Kiki's delivery service. So, we're, so we're, okay, so so I'll, I'll start from uh, I I went forward a bit. <laughs> My bad. So how did you watch these two films, Chad? These two films are well, doing. HBO Max for Kiki's only has English dub. Yeah, and the other one is also English dub only, right? Yup. All right. So. Which I'm fine with. Yeah, so, okay, so for um, so uh, for those who know Hayao Miyazaki, he has done a lot of famous work, and his most famous work are, like, the big three, which we'll be, talk- which we'll be talking about at the very end, because I don't want to, you know, start with, like, the big main course. I always like to go for the appetizers first. <laughs> so the big, main three, the big main three he's known for is Princess Mononoke, uh, House Moving Castle, and Spirit Away. And those are the last three we're doing. So we're going to do... His more obscure films first, and we're gonna start with we're gonna start with two. Would you say Ponyo is obscure? I mean, everyone knows what Ponyo is. Yeah, I know, but not 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 Ponyo. Um, these two are not really obscure, hmm. but these are the less famous. So we're and we're gonna start with we're gonna start with, um um Studio Ghibli month off with or Hayao Miyazaki month off with. Um, the two odd films out, you know, these two are like the not the weirdest, but if you look at the filmography, it's the one with the it's the one with the weirdest, like, or the most out of place plots or out of place premise. So, for um, to start it off, we're doing Kiki's Delivery Service and The Wind Rises. So, let's start off with Kiki's Delivery Service, Chad. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? That was just okay. Kiki's was just fine. Yeah. Kiki's really is... Um, it kind of just is like... A, I mean, I, I it's a family film. So far, all three of them have been, but this one is just very... Uh, maybe it's because of my age, but it's just kind of like watching it. I'm like, this just kind of feels like a movie like either little kids or like little girls would just like really love or even yeah, just I girls understand. in general would love. I mean... It's not bad. I just, I just didn't really get anything out of it. Yeah, I understand where, where you're coming from because it's like it's like um, you're watching this from like an adult's perspective. I mean, like you're not like a, a little kid who's like sitting down and watching this for the first time. Maybe you'd have like a different perspective if you were. But like Kiki's delivery service is, for me, like um, remember what Bill said in that group chat in in, in our group in our group chat. He said that Hayao Miyazaki films are either a great great big fantasy epics with like amazing animation or B their slice of life films with a unique twist this is de- mm-hmm. this definitely falls in the B category absolutely because it really is a slice of life um and an anime with um it's basically a coming of age story with um the twist being that oh she's a witch 
and she has a talking cat. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, basically, this is like basically, um, this is basically Kiki's like coming of age story where oh, she leaves the nest and she makes it on her own. She goes to a town. She meets people. You know, I mean, like, did you, did you like those interactions? Did you like it when she was like, you know, starting her delivery service? No, it was good. It's yeah, no, the character was interesting. It's just. How to put it? It was. Just it's like, hard to describe because it's again, it's not bad in the slightest at all. There's, I don't like, I don't have any problems with this movie at all. It just maybe it's just the story itself didn't resonate much yeah, with you, me. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, in fairness, like I can rec like how to put it i can recognize quality it just wasn't for me if that yeah it makes sense if like, that like, makes sense like like you can see why it's a good movie but it's just not for you yeah and i mean there's plenty of them out there like it just comes down to Fish. if people are you know mature enough to actually admit when something's good that it's just not for them instead of jumping to i didn't like it so it's total shit yeah, there yeah. Plenty of people who are like that because it's not. This film is not shit. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a nice adventure of a little girl who. This is again. I think we kind of like talked about it off air. It's like this is a world where you know it's it's a completely normal world like what we live in. Yeah. Just some people are witches, and that's just a like you said a part a, a part of life of this world that he's created yeah and exactly. it's it's cool because people just accept it she's just like you know hey i'm a witch and they're just like all right okay, well you know yeah. like learn how to fly yeah exactly and it, it, it's more of like for me it's like um this is this is known as um this is known as hayao miyazaki's quiet film it's a very that's the best way you can describe it it's a very quiet film there's no like there's no like big battle or like you know like, and, 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 I had, you know what? Speaking of that, I had to keep reminding myself, like anytime something like there was one part where like she went to the old lady's house and they're like, "Let me take your broom." I'm like, maybe they're gonna like break it. And I'm like, no, this is a, a kids movie. There's, they're not gonna do anything devious or diabolical like that. Yeah. And then they didn't, and I was like, yeah, I knew it. <laughs> exactly. Like this is a very quiet film. I mean, like the main climax is. Like, like the big climax of this movie is Kiki saves a guy from falling from an airship. That's basically the big climax of the movie. But what I like about what I like about it, it's basically like um, um, the coming of. But age. she's overcoming an obstacle while doing that final yeah. bit. Yeah, well, exactly. What, what I like about it is basically like um, unlike most female protagonists today, it's not like. Oh, I'm so great with everything, like, and I'm. I don't need a man. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I am all the Jedi. And I'm like, it's, it's not, not something like that. <laughs> it, it's more of like you know, she's learning. You know, she's becoming. She's be, she has her flaws. Like, like I, I like that part honestly, where she loses her magic for a while. It's like I, I'm not sure what to do because like I, I'm uninspired, and then like I, I like I like the fact that her friends like you know just take a breath, you know, feel it, feel the emotions. Um, think of think of things that are important in your life, and then you will fly in no time. Like that's basically what she says, right? And it's, it, and that's that's awesome. Cause like you can relate to Kiki. It's like, that, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I have, I've had times where I'm uninspired, like I don't want to do anything, where I can't, I don't feel like flying or anything like that. I, I, like th like you know, theoretically, like in a figurative way, I, I've had those times. Like when you see, yeah, it's like, and it's got to be scary too, because it's like she can't talk to her best friend anymore suddenly. Yeah, her, the cat, like, I forgot to mention, the cat, Gigi, doesn't talk to him anymore, which is, like, a very, like, sad thing because the cat has been with her this entire time and now she can't talk to the cat. If well, and the, the fact that she can't talk to him at the end, I was reading something about that, and they equated it to the metaphor of basically she grew up and she, wa she wasn't able to talk to her quote-unquote imaginary friend anymore. Yeah, exactly. That, 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 well, that's, the, that's one of the things. It's like, um, she is developing, she's growing. She's not anymore a kid, you know, she's coming of age. That's why that's the best way to describe This is a coming of age movie with a protagonist who just happens to be a magic girl. You know what I mean? Like, 
and and I love the fact that you know she's trying to make friends, but she doesn't want to make friends too much. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like she has that one guy who's like that one friend of hers who's like, yeah, let's be friends, but I don't want to go near your other friends. You know what I mean? Tombo. Huh? His name was Tombo. Oh right, yeah, Tombo. Sorry. And then, <laughs> and then you have also like you also have like her first failure. You know, you have like. Um, which I like. It's like, yeah, sometimes, you know, the world is like not as beautiful as it seems like but that, that point of where, of where um, Kiki has to deliver this cake and the, and the old lady not only like, I put my heart and soul to this cake and all that. Or was it the cake or a pie? It was the, the tuna casserole thing. The casserole, sorry. Yeah, was... my, I'm way off. I don't, we don't have casseroles here in the Philippines. So, so, and like I, I put my whole heart and soul this casserole, please bring it, and then, and then that's what like, an oh, awful girl, thing like, to say. Like I told my idiot grandmother not to make these cakes for me, like these casseroles for me anymore. And and Kiki's like, and you can see on her face, like she's shocked. You know, she's like, wow, so these, so there really are people like this. So it's like it's that's really like you know it's discovering the world outside your nest. That's basically what Kiki's delivery service is. Mm-hmm. And I like it world. I I also like it a little world building too. You know what I mean? The whole, the whole she's flying and then there's another witch that's doing the same exact like thing that she's doing right now. That girl was a brat too. Yeah, yeah, she was a brat too. I was just like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, okay, and, 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 and since it's an animated film, let's talk the animation stuff. Do you like the animation in Kiki's Delivery Service? Uh, yes, to the best of my now memory, because it's been a few days since I watched it. This was one of the ones that did not incorporate CGI in it yet, correct? None of Miyazaki's films have CGI in them. None. Wind None Rises the- looked like it had CGI in it. No, 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 no. That, that wasn't CGI though. Promise. So that was just drawn good. Yeah. Animation. That's how good Studio Ghibli is. None of this. None of the. None of the Ghibli films have CGI. Wow. Okay. Well, they fooled me then. Yeah. Well, no like I knew I wasn't sure if it was like a mixture of hand drawn and CGI for like some of the shots in wind rises of like the grass blowing or something but hey if it wasn't it wasn't but um yeah. no I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty good I it, think some of looked, the other ones are like painting, better right? what? It, it, it looked like paintings right like you know like like the, 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 those over shots of the town like 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 um and when she was flying it looked like a painting right oh yeah yeah exactly and you'll see a lot of that like going forward like as you go down the roster of studio ghibli's films you'll see a lot of that yeah i'm not really i i don't like when they incorporate um cgi and hand-drawn it's just i i know there's plenty of people that do and all of you that do, I'm very happy for you. I'm not one of them. I don't like how it looks. Mm. I just think it looks... You can tell the difference. Yeah. You can tell the difference between hand-drawn and CGI. So to me, it's just... It's like they don't mesh well together. <laughs> but no, I like... I, I like. I really like his style of animation. I think it's very... I think it's just very... What's a good word? very like clean and it's very different from American animation where it's like characters it seems in these movies like they have a different style of movement than what you see in American um, animation right. it's it's hard to describe um, without like you know you watching it or something you know what I mean right that makes sense that makes sense but did, but did, do you like it I mean like do you like the style of animation? No, I just praised it. That's why I, that, no, yeah, I praised it. So I actually hate it. <laughs> yes, I like it. No, 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 I'm, I'm just making sure, Chad. I'm just making sure. <laughs> just making sure. Yes, I like it. It's, it's, it's a nice change up from uh, what, um, you know, what we have here in America. But I mean, I also, you know, I did grow up watching, uh, Dragon Balls, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, which I'm actually rewatching right now. So when I'm not watching these, I'm watching that. <laughs> but the, no, it's just, I like it because, and even those are massively different from each other, but they still have like a similar looking-ish style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's anime, like in every, like 
they all uh, look different, but at the same time, they all look similar. Does that make any sense? No, I know what you mean because it's, <laughs> the, it's, a, it's the facts. <laughs> Um, but no, I mean, yeah, no, I really like how it looks. It, uh, it's just, it's very nice. It's very clean. It's just, it's fun looking. It really is. It really is. All right. So I mean, like, hmm. do you have anything else to say about, uh, Kiki's delivery service? Uh, like I said, it's not, it's, it's not one of the best things I've ever seen, but I don't have any problems with it. It's not, it's, it's nice, harmless fun about a coming of age film. Um, if you're a guy out there who really loves it, more power to you. I just kind of, I just probably always will kind of view this as like a movie that like families can watch or like, you know, little girls will really love or something. That's, that, that's cool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just very, like I said, it's a very quiet film. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you can't really like, you can't really like, um, it's something to watch like when you want to chill out. That makes sense. No, I know what you mean. We got there's plenty of movies like that. That's just like you just hit the point where it's like I just want to sit down, watch something that I don't have to think too deeply about, relax and enjoy it. Yep. So now after that, we're gonna so we're gonna move away from Kiki's delivery service because we're gonna go with another film that really is the odd man out because everyone, every single one of Miyazaki's films are all fantasy magic adventures this is the only one in the entire roster that is well a biography and i'm really surprised with your reaction you told me like you really think this movie is a masterpiece so Ch chad tell me, it is what a masterpiece you, what do you think no but like i'm surprised that you really like love, love, love this movie because a lot of people like this was miyazaki's last film so the wind rises is miyazaki's like last one before he retired and then when it came out people got mixed reviews like, and i don't understand why because because everyone's like he made fantasy films for so long and now he's making a biography what so yeah it's it's called it's called i guarantee he wanted to do this project for the longest time and they always were just like no yes, just keep yes, doing what yes. you do yes 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 exactly so what do you think of the wind rises chad uh it's a masterpiece it like absolutely hit it just like you said kiki's was slow i thought this was far more slower but i was also like far 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 more invested in jiro's life and his journey i didn't say kiki's was slow i said kiki's was quiet quiet whatever yeah i thought this was way quieter of a story because i think kiki ran her mouth way more than jiro talked Right, yeah, 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 yeah. But I, no, not being a, and so this was another one I watched. Uh, this one was another uh, English dub one. Yeah, right. But I was fine with it because I didn't feel like any, like, you know, sometimes you watch like English dubs and they have character voices that just like pop out at you. And it's just like, oh, it's like all you hear is that like comedian's voice. Kind of like, uh, what was that movie they just announced yesterday? the Super Mario Brothers movie, which is nothing but big name actors. Right, right, right. right. We're all going to sound just like themselves. But it's like, I listen to this and it's like, okay, for the English dub, Jiro is voiced by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. I could have fooled me. Sounded nothing like him, in my opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Uh, Nohoko... Emily Blunt, but she was perfect for the role because Noko was a very quiet character and Emily Blunt's voice fit perfectly. Yep, I agree there. Uh, his best friend, Kiro, John Krasinski, but I mean, John Krasinski's voice will always stand out because it just, everyone knows him, but it's like his voice doesn't, didn't rip me out of it. Like he doesn't, he wasn't like trying to like play a comedian or play, you know, Jim from The Office. He was just using his own voice and he, just everyone did a good job. Like, yeah, just across the board, everyone I thought did a good job on the characters that they played because none of them like popped out like, oh, that's just a celebrity's voice. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So what do you think? Like in the last movie, Kiki's Delivery Service with your favorite uh, Spider-Man love interest. Oh, uh, don't remind me. <laughs> 
Hey, you didn't have to watch that version or listen to that version. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, I absolutely love this movie. I think it's just, I, I think this is a genuinely like underrated, like just masterpiece of a film. All right, so what do you like about it, Chad? Like, you, uh, tell me, like, you know, what? what can- uh, everything. I think his, I think the love story is, uh, how to put it? I know a lot of people would probably say it feels rushed, like, oh, they just met when they were kids. And it's like, yeah, but it's like, she like fell in love with him basically for being a good person and going out of his way to help two strangers in need. And fate brought them back together when it probably never should have with basically the title of the film. If the wind hadn't blown and he hadn't caught that umbrella, they never would have been reunited. Yeah, that was awesome. But- and because of the love that these two characters had, she helped him fulfill his dream of designing, um, you know, an incredible airplane. Yep, I agree. But like... And uh, we'll but- talk about the end at the end. But that was, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I really didn't want to break this with you. But okay, but I'll break this to you right now. Um, uh, the Wind Rises is a, is, a, is a true story. Everything that happens in that movie is true. No, I know it was. But there's one fantasy element that that is in the movie that is not I'm guessing real. The relationship. Yep, the relationship is not real. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother me. Yeah, I know, I know, right? But it's still good, right? It's still good. No, like, maybe yeah. See, stuff like that doesn't bother me because it's like this biographies especially like it's almost like that's why when i was first talking to you about this and you're like oh it's a biography you know based on something real it's and that's why i kind of compared it to something like a prince of egypt where it's like prince of egypt isn't verbatim exactly what happened in the bible exactly but it's based on the story of that so it's like i knew this wasn't verbatim that i mean yeah there are and also i mean i don't it was an interesting story for the character of Jiro in this movie. I don't know how interested I'd really be following a man who designs planes. No, but Hayao Miyazaki, Hayao Miyazaki, what he wanted to do was he wanted to show the difference between, he wanted to show Jiro's, um, Jiro's passion for airplanes to the point where he uses the wife, this love story, as a stepping stone. Because you know what happens at the end, right? Like we will, we'll talk about it at the end. But... Um, but what, but basically the wife was used as, or what's the name of the wife again? Mariko? Or Hariko? Naoko. Nahoko, right? right? My bad. Nahoko was used as a way to show that how passionate Jiro's, um, love for planes was and how, um, his love for planes resulted into the end where it was used for war. Because those planes that he designed are the Japanese Zeros, which I told you off air, bombed Pearl Harbor, right? Yep. And that's what, and if you look at the statement, this is a true statement. Um, when he was asked what, what when he was asked, or, um, what, uh, uh, when he was asked what he thought of the planes bombing Pearl Harbor, he said that my designs were meant to create joy. I didn't want these planes to, to cause grief and war, but they were used mm-hmm. that way. So it's really like uh, it's really like um, shows like kind of a tragedy in a way. It, yeah, exactly. The Wind Rises is a tragic story, like um, because his planes were used for war, and and he just wanted to design to design something beautiful. Like I almost want to see like a director's cut where um, he where he what was his reaction to it for the Pearl Harbor bombing? You know, it was like, damn. Yeah, because the movie ended before we got to that uh, time period. All right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we, we don't know exactly what happened. Because like, the last thing we see in the movie is um, the planes flying off and Jiro's like looking at them and they're, like, and they're saluting and he's saluting. And that's it, right? So we don't know exactly know what happens after that, which sucks. Because it's like, oh, man, I wanted to see that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but that also opens a door for anyone interested afterwards to 
you know, do their own research and delve themselves into history a little bit. And I kind of like when movies do that. They like leave that door open. Like you want to know more? Yeah. Like, do, you know, do your own research on history because history has so much to learn from it. Yeah, exactly. And it's a very like, and, um, and a lot of, uh, while the relationship was fictional, because like, um, Nahoko didn't really exist. Um, while it was fictional, uh, Everything else was real. For example, that earthquake. That earthquake was at, at, at the beginning where he saves Nahoko from. That's a mm -hmm. real earthquake. Yeah, 1913, I think. Yeah, the 1913 earthquake in Japan. Exactly. That was a real earthquake. And a lot, and like a lot, and and, and, and the Jiro was caught in that earthquake. So that, that's true. So like him building these planes is really like, and okay, of course, also those dreams are a fan, fantasy element. You know, it's like, he didn't actually dream of Caprese saying like, oh, <laughs> airplanes, he might have. airplanes are beautiful dreams and all that. You know, he didn't he might have. You don't know that. You never know. Exactly. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we don't know what he was hallucinating in his brain. <laughs> and here's the thing also, Chad. I mean, like, um, uh, Hayao Miyazaki really is uh, a big fan of airplanes. So you'll see a lot of flying in all these movies. Hmm. In all his okay. movies. Yeah, it's exactly like Kiki's delivery service. We just talked about it. She's flying a lot, right? Here, she's flying a lot. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like, like Kiki's delivery service. She, um, she's flying a lot here. It's about airplanes and a lot of other, a lot of other, um, what is a lot of other Hayao Miyazaki films have flying. Nice. Yeah. So you'll really see a lot of those. <laughs> so. But another thing I loved about this film, too, is uh, you can tell it was much newer than the other two I've watched by the animation. It's so it's so crisp and cleaned up, but it's like I'll always have a love for like 80s and 90s animation where it's like it does it, where it's like completely obvious that there's no CGI. Because like I said, I thought it if there wasn't, I believe you. It just, there were scenes where it just looked like there was though with some scenes, which again, if there wasn't, I definitely believe you. But also another thing, the music in this film is so good. Yeah, I know, right? All, so far in all three of the ones I've watched, the music is incredible that they go with. It's just such beautiful scores they've chosen for these. Oh, you definitely, like, Studio Ghibli never fails with the music. Never fails. In this movie, it's like, uh, you, you get, like, zero story, like, not verbatim, but you get the idea. You know, like, he was so passionate about airplanes. And that... You know, let, let's jump to the end. You want to talk about the end already? <sighs> I'm ready if you are. <laughs> okay, so basically the the plot, the side plot is, so Jiro gets married, but the wife is sick, right? So um, the wife has always been in like um, the, what do you call those? Like the moratorium? Like what do you call those? Like, they called it the sanatorium, didn't they? Sorry, the sanatorium, exactly. Um, that... Uh, but then she leaves the sanatorium to be with Jiro and uh, the ending is she leaves um, she leaves the, the home and leaves Jiro letters so that um, she can go back to the sanatorium and die there because she wants Jiro to remember her as she was not as a decaying body I was like so sad when that happened honestly like, what, was your, what was your reaction when, when that happened? I mean, that's honestly one of those things that just brings tears to my eyes. And it's like, even days later, I was, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah, I know, right? Because like, it's sad. It's like, and there's, and like, I read something also that said, like, that scene where, like, the wind blew really hard when he was out in the field. That was like a sign that yeah, she just passed away. Yeah, exactly. So that's... it's like, she didn't even make it back to the sanatorium. She, like, what she died on the train going back, so she died all alone by herself. Yeah, I was like, that's even more sad because it's like, and I get the reason. I, I, I guess I get the reasoning, but it's like, this is the guy who married somebody knowing she was dying. He was gonna always remember the good times, no matter what she looked like. So it's almost like, I, I, I don't agree with her character's decision. I want him to remember me and leave because then, like that. 
Now, he, again, a time long before cell phones, he's, he might never find out where she died, where her body is, where she's going to be buried. Yeah, exactly. It's just even more sad when you think about it that way because now she's really gone. Yeah, and then exactly. the line that just hits me is the one when he's in his dream where, and you said it best, what was it she said to him? You must live. You must live. That just hit because that's just like, that like that's i know it's a cartoon but it's like that's you know that's love yeah right there she she didn't want she didn't want joe to die just because she died also and yeah exactly you you brought it up the whole the whole theme of hayao miyazaki um was wanting to in to portray in this movie it's like what do dreams cost you know it's like what like and i hate to throw around themes because some people like use that as like a smoke screen to defend films I really I hate throwing that out there, but but in this case it really works because like Hayao Miyazaki wanted to show it wanted to illustrate properly a message of what do dreams cost, like what is the cost of them, you know? And then it's like he builds the planes, but at the same time he sacrificed the relationship with his wife. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't get to see her last moments. He will never know what what, what what's gonna what would happen to her in her last moments. He was never there, and the. And that, that symbolism of the wind blowing and him looking at it shows that he did, at the end of the day, day, he didn't care about the planes. He just wanted to be with his wife. But the wind blowing showed that it was she, too late. It's too late. She died. It's like a sad... That's why, it's a, that's why it's a tragedy. This movie is a tragedy. It's a tragedy of a man who loved airplanes so much, but, but in the end, didn't even get to be with his wife, who he cared for. And the thing that he wanted most to build a great plane was used for something terrible. Yeah. So that's, that, that's like, that's a sad, like, but that, that's what, and, and honestly, it's a perfect, like, it's a perfect, like, last, um, perfect last, um. It's a good swan song. It's a good Hayes. swan song for Hayao Miyazaki because it's like, yeah, it's a final message. Like, you know, your dreams are important, but what do they cost, really? Like, like do they cost your, you, your wife? You know? Like, what, what's the cost of the dreams? The dreams that you have? You know what I mean? It's exactly. A, it's, it's a beautiful lesson, in my opinion. Like, anyone can learn from that. Kids, adults, old, old, old men and women. They can, they can learn from that. You know, it's like, what is the importance like, do you really, or is, is your tunnel version on the dream so much so important that, that um, you lose the people around you? It's a very good lesson, in my opinion. Yeah, like I said, this is something that, like, days later, I'm still thinking about. So it's like, it's, this is a movie that's going to, like, stick with me for a very long time. I know it. And it's like, yeah, exactly. That ending is one of those endings like I really I really don't want to watch again anytime soon because yeah, I, I know it'll just bring me to tears next time. I know, right? Like that but, scene of his sister seeing Naoko walking down the street and know like without realizing that that was the last time any of them were ever going to see her. Like it's just it's just sad in retrospect. Yeah, I know, right? It, it, it really is. It really is a sad story. It is. I mean, imagine meeting someone and, and it's like, I, I guarantee someone out there could probably flip it and say, oh, she tricked him. And, you know, she should have told him from the get go. Oh, you know, I have tuberculosis or something, but it's like, no, let's don't go there. Like this relate, like we said, this, like you told me that that was a fictional part of the story. It's, it's, it's fine. Just leave it. It added to, it added to the drama of what was being told. Cause like, I've seen people say that sometimes when you watch like, you know, movies or biographies, they go like, oh, that's not actually how it went. It's like, yeah. you do realize not everyone's lives are that exciting. Yeah, if you exactly. want to watch an yeah, actual, like if you want to watch an actual biography, either go read a book or watch a documentary. There, you'll see how quote unquote exciting their life actually is. Because 
not everything has drama and drama lead and drama is needed sometimes for good storytelling. And I'm sure maybe he did live it interesting, like without the romantic interest, but it's like, but then where would the movie have like stopped? Oh, we're just going to stop telling the story right now. You needed something to put there, which it's fine. Again, this is an adaptation of, this is an, uh, this is an adapted form of the story of a man's life. It's it's perfectly fine. It never said yeah, there, this was there are, a documentary. There, there are creative like there are creative liberties like you can take, and this is one of them. Like like wait, if like if Jiro became like a stripper like halfway through, then yeah, that's disrespectful. But he, that, that never happened. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now that would have been an amazing film. Oh my god! Don't ruin, don't, don't don't ruin it. I mean, it wouldn't have been as good as the one we got, but it would have been interesting. <laughs> no, um, I loved this movie. Out of the three I've seen so far, this is quality and storytelling-wise, like light years above Kiki's delivery service. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because like again, it's again, it's polar opposites to Kiki's delivery service. Like this is like complete like one eighty to what Kiki's Delivery Service is. Because like, Kiki's Delivery Service, is com- again, it's coming of age, and this is biography. <laughs> or a fictionalized biography version. <laughs> no, it was, th- this was really good. And like, again, so far out of the three, this is one that I'll openly be telling people like, hey, this is a movie you definitely need to check out. Like, you absolutely have to watch this. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So that's it for The Wind Rises. So anything else, Chad, you want to add before we go? Five out of five. Two thumbs up. Absolutely (laughs) recommend it. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So I guess that's it. So welcome to Studio Ghibli Month, listeners. So next week, we'll be slipping into the sea with Ponyo and... Ponyo! And we'll be seeing how it goes from there. All right, everyone. So catch you soon. I'm Santino signing off. I'm Chad. Adios.